The world I see holds nothing that I want. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 3, 2, 1, 0, and lift off. Beyond this world, there is a world I want. Welcome back, everyone. Seeing all the lovely faces of the live audience. And yeah, I thought we could start this show off with a prayer together. And this is a prayer that I've been using like nonstop, you know, constantly. And it's a really beautiful prayer. And it's actually, how can I give, Father? Like, how can I give? And, and yeah. I just feel like giving is the key right now, you know, it's like giving is everything. And the reason why that is, is because there's this deep belief in lack in the mind that everyone who comes to this world that thinks they're a body or an ego has, you know, and it might show up in many different forms, however it might show up for you, you know, it might show up like, you know, um, horniness or hunger or addiction, you know. Um, any kind of addiction, um, yeah, fantasies, you know, boredom, it could be anything. It's really just the human condition. And, you know, on a, on a previous episode, I talked about the movie Groundhog Day. And it's such an amazing movie, and I think most of you have probably seen it. But basically, it's like the first half of the movie, I think his name is Phil, the main character. He's just in the human condition of lack. And he's just going around um, trying to get what he can, like get, get, get. He's like basically getting, like trying to get nonstop. And he's like miserable, you know, like completely miserable. He's trying to get from this girl, get sex. And then other times he's trying to rob a bank and get money and like get a nice car. And it's all getting. And, you know, he has this really bad attitude. And eventually he just feels so terrible because Getting, all it does is reinforce this belief in lack. It reinforces a false identity with the ego. So, of course, it's like you continue getting, eventually, you know, you just feel terrible. So, it just showed the extreme in his case, like he was just get, get, get. And then eventually he just felt so terrible that he decided to <laughs> steal this groundhog <laughs> and drive off of a cliff. And uh, yeah, his car exploded and he just died. I mean, you can't really die. So in the movie, it just shows him he comes back and the day is still looping. He's stuck in this loop where the same 24 hours is looping over and over. So he tried to kill himself because he was so sick of his life of getting and he just felt terrible. So, but that didn't work. And then he tried to electrocute himself and kill himself 10 different times and it never worked. You know, it just shows that it's like, Death, like Calico was saying, is like death is a state of mind. It's like nothing's going to happen if the body seems to die. You just come back, you know? It's like it's the same loop. But the way to break out of that loop, and it shows it so beautifully in that movie, is through giving, you know? And really giving is a state of mind. And that's why my prayer right now is how can I give, Father? You know, it's a really beautiful prayer. And you know, when we feel this getting in the mind, it doesn't feel good. So it's like every time I feel like my mind's turning to getting mode, I just stop and I'm like, how can I give Father? And it's like immediately this beautiful experience just comes. And it's like the ship has turned in that prayer to giving. Because it's like when you give, you reinforce that you have. You know, in the Course it says having and being are the same. So it's like you can't give what you don't have, but God has given you everything. So you do have everything, actually, and you are everything. And of course, we don't believe that, but that's why we have to continue giving as a state of mind to have that experience that, wow, I actually have everything. And, and you know, the form's going to look however it looks. Like, giving doesn't necessarily mean you just go out on the street and start giving homeless people all your money. You know, it's like it's it's a, it's about guidance. Um, it's not really about giving material things away. It is a state of mind. 
like, um, yeah, recently we we're just in this meeting in the community, and as usual, I was just practicing how can I give Father. And right before the meeting started, I, 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 I had that prayer, and I heard, um, I will give through my presence, and you know, not not the body's presence it doesn't have a presence, but you know, the spirit's presence. So I was like, okay, that's how I'm going to give during this meeting. So it just shows that it's like giving isn't necessarily about the form. And so I just had that prayer and then I heard that and then basically it was a continuous prayer that whole meeting and it was just unbelievable. Like, you know, I can't describe it, but it was just, yeah, it was just giving, you know? And I was like, yeah, it's like these are the kind of things where it's like, an experience will come to end all doubting. It's like I can't really describe what that even felt like, but it was like, you know, it felt like completion, like nothing was missing. There was no lack, no need to get anything. It was just like I had everything, and now I'm just going to share it with everything. You know, and it, yeah, it was just an amazing experience. And, and yeah, then there's this contrast experience of getting. And of course, like I said, it's like this ego is a belief in lack, so it seems to come through all these different appetites, sexual appetite, hunger, thirst, anything that feels like I need to get something because I feel empty or lacking inside, any appetite, it's all coming from the ego, and it's all really a distorted miracle impulse. And when we start giving, it's like we wash away that distorted filter that this miracle impulse is coming through. And then this miracle impulse can come in through pure. And you'll have a beautiful experience where there is no lack. And then you're just in this amazing experience that you can't really even talk about. Um, but yeah, so in that vibe, I have this amazing clip that I found. It's like six minutes long. Um, it's called addiction, and they reference addiction throughout the clip. But don't let that word have any kind of past reference in your mind, because really, addictions aren't just if you're addicted to like drugs or alcohol or addicted to porn or, or whatever in the usual sense. It's like really, it's an addiction to the ego and to getting, you know? It all comes from there. So this video is relatable to anyone who thinks they're a human being. And if you're watching this, you probably think you're a human being, myself as well. So we're all gonna watch this together. And, um, and yeah, just sit back, enjoy. And I'm not gonna pause this one, so just enjoy this one. All addictions are a desire for true connection. David Hoffmeister. Every day starts the same. We don't see the destructive patterns in seeking for pleasure. The day goes on like any other. We can't see beyond the never-ending routine. Others have it, why don't I? We strive for something, anything, to feel connected, loved, safe. We fail, we succeed. It's too much. We give in, we give up, and we give out. We spend time and energy focused on meaningless matters of this world, endless ambitions and expectations for something to fulfill us. We chase a life of fantasy, wanting to achieve the success of this world. We feel compelled and driven to distraction, trying to get some type of self-satisfaction. We begin to grab for anything for relief. Shopping, porn, drugs, alcohol, sex, relationships, and an endless list of meaningless things that distract the mind for a temporary hit of connection, but quickly leave us feeling defeated, depleted, and alone. The moment you can't take it, you can't fake it anymore. Enough is enough. 
It's a dream. It's time to wake up. You cannot solve a problem from the same consciousness that created it. You must learn to see the world anew. Albert Einstein. If there is no real answer within this world, then where is it? A radical shift of perception is the miracle that is the answer to it all. Quantum physics is showing us that what we think we know about everything is just a projection from the mind based on a belief system and nothing more. This is very good news. We are using the tiniest part of consciousness to perceive a world and we have no awareness of the magnitude of what is truly offered. Fear is simply a false perception held in place by our mind. We literally perceive what we believe, and it's very, very limited. A shift in perception is what is necessary for any real change of experience. This is known as miracle-mindedness. This shift opens up a whole new world of true love and connection. An experience of wholeness, or what the scientists are calling the quantum field, and religionists call God, is what brings a new reality into focus. When we have an experience of this quantum field, then we see that everything is completely connected. Everything is unified. We begin to relax. To experience true happiness, we have to free ourselves of the programmed mind of stress and fear. Like software that is outdated, it's time to let go and open up to a beautiful new reality. The indulgence and repression of addiction keep everything in a tight loop of frustration and fear. You can undo the nightmare. Addictions are a deep call for a better way. They are a call for real connection and love. It's time to open up to this quantum field. Let the life of striving and effort be undone as we let go of trying to get answers where they cannot be found. There is a power in this field that will carry us out of the dark dreams of stress and worry. The world was designed to reflect our consciousness it was never designed to provide the answers. When we truly want to see, the truth will begin to appear. Simply put, the world we see is an outward picture of an inward condition. Seek not to change the world. Seek rather to change your mind about the world. What did you do as a child that made the hours pass like minutes? Therein lies the key to your earthly pursuits. When you stop trying to control the direction of the wind, the feather of serenity will gently make its way to you. beautiful video right yes yeah, some clapping yeah yeah really beautiful video and it just shows it's like it's this miracle that we need a shift in perception to see that we were wrong that we ever needed to get anything and we get through those miracles get through giving actually we keep giving and we experience miracles and that just shakes up all the beliefs about lack 
in the mind. And it's like, oh, wow. It's like maybe I was wrong about the human condition. Maybe I was wrong about the belief in lack and this unworthiness. Like maybe I was wrong about all of it all. Like maybe there is no unworthiness. You know, it's like maybe I just decided wrong and I can just decide again. Like maybe I'm just wrong about everything. You know, it's like how do I even know any of this is true? Like, yeah, so it's like my prayer is just how can I give, Father? And just to continue giving and giving and giving and giving. And I don't want to do anything else. And I feel like that's the answer to everything right now. Really, it is. And it'll wash away the unworthiness. Um, it'll wash away the lack. It'll wash away the victimization, the anger. And yeah, I just I think I have this beyond all idols section ready here. Chapter 30, Section 3 in the Course. Yeah, it just says, It is not form you seek. What form can be a substitute for God the Father's love? What form can take the place of all the love in the divinity of God the Son? What idol can make two of what is one? And can the limitless be limited? You do not want an idol. It is not your will to have one. And an idol is basically everything that we think will complete us. And an idol is form. You know, it's anything in form. And, um, and yeah, it just says, behind the search for every idol lies the yearning for completion. Wholeness has no form because it is unlimited. To seek a special person or a thing to add to you to make yourself complete can only mean that you believe some form is missing. And by finding this, you'll achieve completion in a form you like. This is the purpose of an idol, that you will not look beyond it to the source of the belief that you are incomplete. Only if you had sinned could this be so. For sin is the idea you are alone and separated off from what is whole. And thus it would be necessary for the search for wholeness to be made beyond the boundaries of limits on yourself. It is never the idol that you want, but what you think it offers you. You want indeed, and have the right to ask for, nor could it be possible it be denied. Your will to be complete is but God's will, and this is given you by being His. God knows not form. He cannot answer you in terms that have no meaning. And your will could not be satisfied with empty forms, made but to fill a gap that is not there. It is not this you want. Creation gives no separate person and no separate thing the power to complete the Son of God. What idol can be called upon to give the Son of God what he already has? Completion is the function of God's Son. He has no need to seek for it at all. Beyond all idols stands His holy will to be but what He is. For more than whole is meaningless. If there were change in Him, if He could be reduced to any form and limited to what is not in Him, He would not be as God created Him. What idol can He need to be Himself? Yeah, so let's just let that sink in for a little. So yeah, that's why the giving is so important because it really, you know, it, whether you get or you give, it reinforces either the ego's thought system or the Holy Spirit's thought system. And it's like when we give, we reinforce that we have, like I was saying, and like it says in the Course, it's like you are already whole, but it's like there's this unworthiness and we don't think we are. So it's like, that's why we just have to keep having this prayer, like how can I give, Father? And just keep giving, 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 and we experience these miracles 
through the giving that show us that we were wrong about ever being incomplete or lacking and ultimately even that we were ever even a person or in the world. And, and yeah, that's why the giving is so emphasized, you know, right now. And even in our community, you know, we have different themes in, in the mind, um, seemingly different phases um, of things that are helpful in the mind. And right now, what is really emphasized is this giving. You know, it's like that's what's really going to help pull us out of this whole belief in lack. And that's even reflected in this week's online retreat. You know, this week's online retreat is about service, like being of true service, a direct path to awakening. It's like, wow, okay, it's like here's the answer right here. It's like through this giving. And then, of course, with the whole service idea, there might be some beliefs like, oh, service, I don't want to be like a, I don't know why I'm thinking, but Boy Scout or whatever, like go and knock on people's door and like, how can I serve you? You know, it's like, it's not about that. It's just, it's really just about following guidance. And it's about giving, you know, it's giving as a state of mind. And then whatever the body seems to do from there is basically irrelevant. You know, it's like we get into this giving state of mind and then it's like, I need do nothing as a state of mind. And then however the form looks, it's going to look. Like now it seems like I have this role of a producer here in the studio and, 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 and then there's like this show. So there's all these like different projects and ways where I can give um, just to keep washing away this belief in lack. And, and yeah, I just had this miracle too. You know, it's like there is no sacrifice and nothing's ever taken away. It's like we really don't know what form is best for us in any moment. It's like what Ken would always say, like, I do not perceive my own best interests. So, yeah, I just had this miracle the other, the other night. Um, this girl wanted to, uh, in Mexico, she wanted to um, apply to come to like volunteer at our center. And, and I was just talking with Anna, she oversees the La Casa de Milagros. And I was just telling her, yeah, she's, she's been messaging me, she really wants to come volunteer. Um, and then it was, it was like 9.30 at night or something, it was already like kind of late by my standards. And, um, but Anna was like, yeah, why don't you just have a call with her? I was like, Okay, yeah, we'll have a call about her wanting to come volunteer. And then it's like there, there's all these beliefs in the mind, right? Like one of them being like, what's a late time? Like that's just a belief. And then there's this other belief that somehow in the evenings, you know, I don't feel as good as the rest of the day. Like that's another belief. So it's like these miracles are just coming to shake up all these beliefs. And so what happened that night was... Um, I was getting ready for the call, getting my computer set up. I went to my room and opened up Skype. And right before the call, you know, it's like everything is in the purpose of the Holy Spirit. Like everything is for healing. The show is for healing. Everything that we seem to do is through guidance and for the purpose of forgiveness. And before the call started, I just was looking in my mind and I could see that I felt some kind of lack. Like I felt this lack. And then I could see the thoughts like, oh, well, you know, it's late, it's in the evening. You don't usually feel as good in the evenings as the rest of the day. It's normal. And it's like, there's that unworthy thought, you know, it's like really catching the, this unworthiness. Like anytime we have any kind of thought like that, especially it's like, oh, wait, that's just unworthiness. Like I am worthy, actually, of consistent effort, you know, and Jesus says, side against this deception, side with me consistently against this deception that you are not worthy of consistent effort. Like side with me against that deception. So, so yeah, there seemed to be this lack. And then, and then I saw the unworthy thought of like, oh yeah, that's normal, you know, normal. It's fine, you know, fine. It's like, we're not okay with fine. We want to be happy. So yeah, I saw that and then I decided to pray this prayer again. How can I give, Father? How can I give? And then 
yeah, it's like every time I say that, I just like it's amazing, you know. And then so I prayed, how can I give, Father? And then and then I went on the Skype call with that purpose out front. How can I give? How can I give? And then yeah, this just so this girl from Mexico. We were just talking, and she was telling me how how her life is going and how she really wants to volunteer. And then of course in the background. I had this prayer that was already set for the call. How can I give? How can I give? And then, uh, you know, it's like as soon as I made that prayer, my mind switched from lack to giving. You know, from getting to giving. And then, so that whole call, it was like th this giving as a state of mind was just radiating from my mind. And because of that, I just like felt all this love and this wholeness and yeah, this experience and this miracle of, wow, it's like just before this call, I felt lacking. And then I just prayed, before I got on the call, prayed, how can I give? And got into giving mode, just like that. It was just a decision. And then just feeling so much love, and then she was reflecting that, and we're just both so happy and like, oh, okay, well, whatever happens, whether you end up volunteering here or not, you know, it was just an experience. Like, it's never about the outcome. Like, it doesn't even matter if she ends up volunteering or not, like at La Casa de Milagros. That's not the purpose of why we have our projects. That's not what, the purpose of why we do anything when we're guided by the Spirit. And in this community, that's not the purpose of why we do anything. It's like the purpose of that call was for the connection, for that experience, for the miracle. Just another, yet another miracle to show me that actually this belief in lack is a little bit fishy. You know, it's a little fishy. Like, <laughs> it's like, hmm, you know, these miracles really stir things up, like start to make you question everything. That's what the call was for. It wasn't for interviewing a volunteer to come to La Casa de Milagros. It's like, no, and I've talked about this before on other shows. It's like, that's why it's so important to remember, what is it for? What are you doing this for? What's the purpose? You know, like, what's the purpose of what you're doing? And, and yeah, it's like, that's the real reason for service. It's to be in this giving state of mind. How can I give? How can I give? So that I know I'm whole and complete through an experience and through miracles. It's because we're tired of the, these ego appetites, like, like who's tired of that? You know, it's like probably everyone, right? It's like there, there's just these appetites and it's like, okay, let me go get some of that. And then it's like, there seems to be this temporary satisfaction, very fleeting. And then it's like the appetite just comes back over and over and over. And it's like, there's no like lasting sense of fulfillment. There's no wholeness, there's no completion. So it's like eventually we have to just stop and question like, okay, is this really how it's meant to be? And it's like, no, it's not. It's like, again, we're studying a course in miracles, you know? It's like, it's a course in miracles and these miracles are gonna help us shift our perception and see that, wow, I was so wrong about everything. I was so wrong about that I was lacking, that I was alone, afraid. Um, even a person, whatever, like all of our beliefs eventually we have to come to this place of I was wrong about everything that I believed. And, and this deep-seated unworthiness, it's like, it is this, it is like a deep belief of the human condition and the belief in separation. So it's like all of this, all of these miracles and all this giving is coming towards that deep-seated unworthiness and washing it away. And and yeah, it is like the decision against unworthiness is a decision to be wrong about everything we think we think and think we know. So thank you guys. And I hope you can join me in this prayer. How can I give, Father, all throughout the week, every moment, every second that you feel lack or unhappiness, just make that prayer. So thank you. And I'm glad I could share this with you all. Thank you.